you have like such a storied career. So let's go back to the beginning. Yeah. How did you get into the adult industry at 19? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry for everyone who's already heard the story because it's definitely like a broken record. I don't think I honestly oh, don't think really? I've heard the story. You haven't heard the story. I don't think oh, so. Okay. okay, that's good. Um, so I actually started, well, I always say like, first things first, like I grew up in South Florida. So mm -hmm. it's always like, to me, that's like a culture of like so much free sexuality. It's mm -hmm. like, it's hot. You're not wearing much clothes. It's hot at night. Like you're still not wearing much clothes. Mm -hmm. Like the, there's beaches, there's nude beaches, like the, the weather and the people are just so much freer with themselves. Yeah. So I feel like the culture is a little bit more, a little bit more sexually accepting yeah. in South Florida. And so I grew up with that around me. I grew up with this like free sexual being of myself. I was like having orgies in high school, things that I thought were normal, you wow. know, like I was just like super sexual or whatever. And so um, I was uh, going to school, like side note, like I just happened to be a sexual character. So mm -hmm. I feel like that's a part of like why I came into where I came. Mm -hmm. But um, I was going to college and my college was like pretty far from where I lived. I didn't want to do public transportation. So I was like, okay, I, I had totaled my car at the time. And so I was like, okay, I need to get more money so I can buy a new car. And at the time I had dated a guy who had taken me to strip, strip clubs. Mm -hmm. And I knew that they had um, like competition nights where the if you won you can get like five hundred dollars or whatever and so i did a competition and i lost because it goes based off of a plot and some other girl brought like her friends with her and so like i know i was like that's like a cheat like you shouldn't yeah. be allowed to do that you bring your entourage yeah that's like that's bullshit. like not fair some of us bitches really needed that fucking money and we were working hard and i threw my i like the, even when thinking about like what I wore to the strip club for my first dance was like just regular like Target bra and underwear and like <laughs> I was like oh my god also like that's probably why I lost I was just like this obviously broke girl mm -hmm. trying to get money um and so I lost, but the I still needed money in the club was like, well, if you want to work the rest of the night, you can. And I was like, oh, OK, so I worked the rest of the night and they offered that I could have a job there. So I, I kept working there. Um, but I like didn't know how to make money. I always call myself a dolphin, not a shark, because like I just didn't know how to get the guys mm -hmm. to pay me. And I'm such a social person that I would be like talking to them. And I felt like they would hustle me because they're like, oh, a stripper who works for free, mm -hmm. you know, like she's just hanging out with us. Yeah. And so. And as well as, like, I didn't have, like, the best luck with some of the girls where, like, uh, with, when I was, like, hanging out with some of the guys, the girls would be like, that's my client. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, have him. Like, I'm not trying to have any troubles. Like You didn't know I, about I, the I, strip club politics. I didn't know. I was so, like, naive and dumb and, like. And like I said, and the guys would take advantage of me because I was just like social. Mm -hmm. And so I decided like, I, cause like the most money I made one night was like 80 bucks. That's... Like I was a horrible stripper. Yeah. I was so bad. And so I was like, I'm going to go back to like a regular minimum wage job <laughs> because like I'm not good at stripping. And so, um, one of the girls was like, oh, well, do you want to do uh, porn? Like you can you can do like a you could be an extra and you'll make like 250 bucks. And I was like, that sounds good. Like that's more than what I'm making now. Mm -hmm. I'm already like showing myself naked and mm -hmm. everything. And like at the time I was already like dancing in Miami, showing myself or mm -hmm. whatever in the clubs. I've been clubbing since I was like 15 and everything. So I was just like that kind of person. And so I was like, OK, like I'll be an extra and everything. Um, but I will say on my first day uh, as an extra, they did try to get me to perform as the boy girl but, um, performer. And I was like, no, I'm on my period. And they're like, oh, you can do this thing with a fucking makeup sponge. Oh, and I was God. like, you're psycho. Like, <laughs> OK, get out of here. And were so, you just using that as an excuse, though? Or were you really no, like. No, I mean, I did have my period. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know if I would have felt pressured into it. Mm -hmm. But I was like, I'm definitely not sticking a fucking makeup stuff makeup sponge in my yeah. vagina because yeah, yeah. this was before I knew about porn. Right, so I right. was like merely supposed to be an extra. And then I was like, no way. I'm not just doing that. And so because I'm imagining I'd have to go to the hospital to get the makeup sponge out. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Which like, has happened to um, some people. Oh, my God. Really? Yeah. Oh, God. I mean, sorry for bring it all down. But yeah, I mean, there's been a couple of girls that like, you know, it just gets stuck up there or. Oh, God. And then but that's pretty rare. I know of like one person that happened okay. too. Damn. I won't I won't say it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Don't say it. I'll but like I, I I I uh I didn't even know that happened. Um 
But so they, I just stayed an extra. Um, and I loved being on set though, because I did in the VIP. So it was like 50 girls and they let us drink and everything. And there was then the main performers, but we would like be drinking and dancing. And I made friends with some of the girls and like, uh, then I was watching, I remember my first scene was uh, with Jay. I wasn't performing, but I watched them. And now I know who they were. At the time, I had no idea who they were. Yeah. But it was Nikki Delano and Jay Mack. And I oh, watched wow. them. Yeah. And I, I I didn't know that Jay Mack was performing back then. I know Nikki Delano. Yeah. I, I don't know if they had like, because I think Nikki Delano hadn't been performing for that long. Yeah. And so I think that they were both fairly new, but I still had no idea. I only now know this after years. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Of course. You know looking back but um seeing them have sex was so hot to me because also j mac is like this big manly man mm -hmm. i'm like hanging out with high school dudes or whatever yeah. and then um Nikki Delano is just like, you know, she's had her tits and she had her ass and she's like this blonde bombshell with the big lips. And it was just like, I was like, oh my God, like this is like porn. And it was so hot to me. And I was an extra maybe like five more times. And each time I would slowly do a little bit more where I was like, okay, now this time I'm going to like flash my tits and like make out with a girl. Okay. Now this time I'm going to like maybe play with the girl's like pussy or mm -hmm. whatever. And then like, finally I was like, okay, like I feel confident and comfortable enough to be a performer because like even though I did try they tried to finesse me or whatever but I was like okay whatever I can like look past it or whatever mm -hmm. because I know I know myself they couldn't they didn't force me they mm -hmm. asked I said no and that was it and everything and so I didn't feel like I I know that porn and, and it's, to me it's any place can put pressure on you to do yeah. things that you don't want to do totally. and it's not just limited to porn so it's limited to you being responsible for yourself and so I gave porn that uh, that opportunity and I learned through being on set that I liked how porn was run. It to me it felt professional on the sets that I was on because I feel like I also wasn't like put in positions to shoot for like super shady companies. Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't like in these casting couches mm -hmm. in my first environment. So it was like it was pretty big productions because I was like on an, an extra with like 50 other girls and stuff right, like that. Right. And it was like in the VIP. So it felt pretty like legit and everything yeah. like that. And so I felt pretty confident wanting to put my foot into porn. And so then I reached out to Bang Bros and was like, I want to shoot like my own scene. Like, let's like, how do I do that? And everything like that. And so then it just kind of like made my way in and met uh, type nine modeling was my first agency. Oh God, Kevin. yes, I remember them. Um, yes, I think actually before them, it was this other lady. Oh my God, it was this other lady. I totally forgot about her. Who was this lady? I don't even remember her name. She was this random lady and she introduced me to type nine modeling because type she didn't have uh, opportunities in California and type mm. nine was like, we could get you to L.A. Yeah. And I was like, because they were like, you can't survive in Miami because you're like a white girl. They're like only the Cuban girls can make a career here in Miami. Oh, like like the La Latina women mm -hmm. can like thrive in Miami. But yeah. they're like, you need to go to L.A. to if you want to do porn. And I was like, OK, that sounds fun. Like, mm -hmm. let's go. And. I went and started shooting and that was like, that was it. And that was it. Hey guys, if you wanna support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q and A's, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates.